We want to take a closer look now at the military equation on both sides of this conflict. For analysis of that, we turn to Pat Lang, former head of intelligence analysis for the Middle East at the U.S. Defense Department. Mr. Lang, thank you very much for being with us. Can you describe the kind of fighting that's currently going on now in Gaza? Yeah, it's pretty clear in spite of the Israeli uh, attempt to, to block direct coverage of this by correspondence. In fact, what the Israelis are attempting to fight a war of materiel, that is of equipment, of tanks and artillery and aircraft uh, against these uh, rather fairly lightly armed uh, semi guerrillas on the side of Hamas. And they're doing that in order to minimize their own casualties because they're, they are an army and a people who are extremely sensitive to casualties. On the other side, you see the Hamas people who uh, are not armed to the, the scale of equipment that Hezbollah had in Lebanon. They were trying to get there, but they weren't there yet, who are going to try to fight a war in which they will substitute bodies and light weapons against the Israelis. The Israelis are only now getting to the stage where they're trying to penetrate the major towns. That's why you're seeing a lot of damage to buildings and heavier civilian casualties. And I would think that will escalate. The, the whole premise of Israel going into Gaza was to stop the strikes by Hamas missiles onto Israel. They have not done that as yet. If they don't stop the missiles, what does that do to the military mission? Well, I think uh, it, it ruins it. And in fact, it ruins Israel's presumed purpose in doing this. You can make all kinds of assumptions about the effect of the Israeli coming election and our new government on their thinking. But in fact, they have stated very clearly, the Israelis, that in fact, that their purpose here is to stop Hamas from firing rockets into uh, southern Israel. And so if, if the Hamas people can fire even one rocket after the Israelis are through, they will be judged locally in the area and perhaps across the world as having failed to be able to dominate this situation. This would be a terrible outcome from their point of view, from the point of view of their ability to deter other people from doing things. And I would have thought they would have thought that through before they started this, but they don't seem to have done that. This is being all waged in a very densely populated area. Uh, how can you, if at all, minimize civilian casualties when the people can't even flee the fighting? You can't, in fact, it's impossible. And from the moment that Israel starts to engage close up with armored vehicles, and these are these Merkava tanks are real monsters, up close and with artillery fire and support, and uh, with a lot of people who are confined to this space and who cannot escape, in fact, then there are inevitably going to be a lot of casualties. And I would have thought that would have been thought through too, as effect on Israel's position. But there's uh, the, the overriding desire in order to, to restore their credibility as a, as the a dominant military power seems to have been the major element in their thinking in this. And I, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You don't fight wars for military purposes. You fight them for political purposes. Pat Lang, a military expert, thank you very much for speaking with us today. You're welcome.